this is Mike the Friend, and we're here for another Tech Tips with Everest Factor. Uh, there's been leaps and bounds in heaters over the last few years, and the technology is just improving and improving. Uh, but with that comes a little confusion on which heater is which. When we now have a Gen 1, 2, and 3 air heater, a Gen 1, 2, and 3 cooling heater, knowing what pumps go to what heaters, what controllers go to what heaters. So we're gonna to try to clear that up a little bit. First off, the visual indications of what heater you're dealing with. The Gen 1 air heater has been around for years. Uh, very easy to, to identify. It has a flat black top and the connector is a rectangular connector squared off on the corners. The Gen 1, also has a fuel pump that has a square electrical connector on the outlet side. Just remember, fuel pumps, the high side is always gonna be the outlet side. Optimum angle is 15 to 35 degrees. So Gen 1, yes, you have a square connector and it is on the outlet side. When you go to Gen 2, it looks identical. It utilizes the same shell, but you will notice the Gen 2 electrical connector is more of a D-shaped. The Gen 2 also is when we came out with the new fuel pump. The new fuel pump, the electrical connector is now on the inlet side. Remember, the high side, 15 to 35 degrees, is always the outlet. So the connector now is on the inlet side by where your cap is for your fuel filter. So you'll notice you have a new fuel pump, the electrical connector is oval, not square, and it's on the inlet side. So Gen 2, D-shaped connector, new fuel pump. Gen 3 now has a pattern on the top of the heater. It also has the D-shaped connector, and it also has the new fuel pump. When we go to coolant heaters, we have hydronic ones. The hydronic one, most of the time you will see it as a what's called a hydronic D5SC. So the coolant pump is molded into the top of the heater. It has a D-shaped plug. The hydronic two has the wiring for the electronic control unit coming up the top. It has an oval connector and it is a little different looking with the ports coming out the top. These ports are available on straight and they also have 90 degree ports, so it could be either way. When you go to a Hydronic 3, you actually go to the newest heater. This is in a few different versions, a CS and a CL. We currently sell the CS mostly at this point in time. But this, so this is a Hydronic S3, D5, or B5 for benzene or gas. And it also has all the newest in technology, but the electrical connectors are on the bottom. When you're looking at the fuel pumps, another indication, if you see the original fuel pump with the square connector, it will be a hydronic one, or it will be a hydronic two. When you go to the Hydronic 3, it now has the new fuel pump. The fuel pump identification is very important also. The fuel pumps, if you ever question you have the right fuel pump, is it is imperative to put the right pump with the right heater. Because if you look at the fuel quantity of a two kilowatt air heater, but yet you have a five kilowatt coolant heater, you cannot get those pumps mixed up. Some pumps will actually give the kilowatt range on them, but one thing you can always count on, if you cross the part number, the first six digits of the part number is the first six digits on the pump to identify your pumps. A good example on a Hydronic 1, Hydronic 2, D5, or an Airtronic that is a two kilowatt or a four kilowatt, you cannot intermix those pumps. 
So if you had a pump that was a 224519, that would be for a two or four kilowatt air heater. If you had a pump that said 224517, that would be for a five kilowatt heater. So do not get those pumps mixed up because they are the same pump, but calibrated differently. Let's talk about controllers. We have three, the most common controllers right now. So we have a Digimax. The Digimax is used on an Airtronic series, okay? But this would be used on an Airtronic 1 primarily. Once you go to an Airtronic 2 or Airtronic 3, the generations, you would actually switch over to a CAN bus controller. This is referred to as the Easy Start Pro. This is another indication. If you see the Digimax, you're more than likely working on a Gen 1. If you see an Easy Start Pro, you're definitely working on a Gen 2 or a Gen 3 because it will not work on a Gen 1. When you look at the Easy Start Timer, the Easy Start Timer would be the timer for coolant heaters. The Easy Start Timer is generally used on a Gen 1. The Pro would be used on a Gen 2 or a Gen 3. There is a possibility to swap this over to different heaters, but you have to get into a lot of programming. So please put the right controller with the right heater. It makes using it a lot simpler. When you get to coolant heaters, a Gen 1, would use an easy start timer. A Gen 2 would use an easy start timer. A Gen 3, there are two Gen 3s. There is a Gen 3 that is a CL version. There is a Gen 3 that is a CS version. This is very important. If you have a Gen 3 CL, you must use an easy start timer. It is the only controller. That is a LIN bus controlled heater. This is a LIN controller. The CS version is a Easy Start Pro because this is a CAN bus module. One other way to tell what heater you have is by looking at the data tag. All your heaters should have a data tag on the side of them. On the data tag, at the top, it will give you the heater model name. Then the next will be a heater model version. So this says Airtronic. This is a D2 diesel two kilowatt air heater. The next number down is the heater model part number. If you're looking for parts or you want to identify exactly what heater you have, if you take this six digit number, that number will cross and give you the exact heater. And if you buy your parts off of this, this will guarantee you, you always get the right parts. The next number down will be your heater serial number for warranty reasons or if you need any type of information of that heater if we have this serial number we can tell you date of sale and where it went to this also ties into your warranty then you come down to your fuel type diesel or it would say benzene if it was a gas fired heater the next one is the electrical power consumption how many watts and what volt it is. Maximum heater output. This heater being a D2, maximum output on boost is 2.2 kilowatts. And then if there's an operating pressure for altitudes, it would be down here. There is a square barcode towards the bottom and your, your EU numbers for certifications are found at the bottom. I hope this helps clear up some of the mystery of what heater you're working on because each heater is a little different. They require different replacement parts and you, they do not intermix most of the time. If you need have any technical questions, by all means, feel free to call us at 1-800-387-4800 and we will help in any way that we can. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.